Hey, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to run through stereo tracking using multiple camera views. So we're going to start out opening up our shot. And of course, we always open the left images first. And now we'll go back. We're opening up our right images. We've got our shots here. Right now, we just are looking at a single camera view, and it's set up to look at the left camera. That's the default active tracker host here. You can see up in the upper left-hand corner, it's labeled what it's looking at. And if you go on the right-click menu, you can actually go and change that for any particular camera view to look at any particular object at camera. So here I've changed it to right camera one, and you see that the active tracker host up here hasn't changed at all. But on the other hand, if I do go and change the tracker host up at the top, then since there's only a single camera view here, it's made to follow along with that active tracker host setting. So whenever you change that active tracker host, Synthize always goes around and makes sure there's at least one camera view that shows the active tracker host. So for doing stereo tracking, it's more convenient to have both camera views visible at once. So I just went to one of the camera views that uh, viewport configurations that does that. Now I've got a left camera view and a right camera view. See the uh, right camera is the active tracker host. That's labeled up in the top. There's a little star and it's in a bolder font. I can go and just click in each of these and you'll see that the active tracker host is switching back and forth as I'm doing that. So some of the other details of having multiple tracker hosts, you know, here I've just got some different zooms set up and you know I can zoom any of these however I want. The button down at the bottom that resets the camera view resets all the views as you saw there. And there are actually several different modes here. That's just the default one. If I uh, hold down the control key then it centers them and if I hold down the shift then it zooms them all the way in so that the pixels are one-to-one -one between the source images and the display. So there are a bunch of different modes there. And those modes all apply to the keyboard accelerators as well as to the button. Likewise, if I want to just do a single camera view, I can look out on the right-click menu of it. And here's the reset zoom. So I can go and reset the zoom of each of the camera views independently to a different mode or a different time or whatever. So, and the same thing applies also <clears throat> if I do the keyboard accelerator, uh, which is zero for that reset zoom, and the keyboard accelerator is routed to the window in which the mouse is sitting. So that effect occurs with a number of different things where the keyboard accelerator is being routed to the window in which the cursor is currently sitting. So that gives you control over the whole process. So now let's take a look at creating some trackers. So I'll just zoom in here a bit. And We're going to go over to the tracker control panel and turn on that tracker creation one. And now I can click in one of the views, maybe adjust some of the parameters. And it's a good idea to adjust the parameters now so that when I go and create the second tracker in the other view, the copies are the parameters are copied over to the new tracker as well. If I go and edit these at this point, then they're they're separate and often they need to be separate in order to achieve the tracking that you want to do. But at the time that they're created, you, you get the chance to have them copied from one to the other. So at this point, I can now just go and hop back and forth between the different views. And you can see I can do it kind of in alternating fashion or I can do two on the one side and two on the other side, which saves a little bit of mouse work. Now, if I go and create a couple on the same side here, now I'll go and I'll create the matching one for this one. 
And you notice that I don't have a match for this particular one there. Now that 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 can be okay. There's nothing that says that every tracker has to be part of a pair. But if really what you had in mind was to have it as part of a pair, what you need to do now is just go back, select it, and now you can go over and create its matching tracker. So the point is that when you're creating a new tracker, Synthize looks to see if you've got exactly one tracker selected in the other eye that doesn't isn't already part of a stereo pair. And uh, as long as you've got just one selected on the, on the other eye, then it goes and it creates the new one, links the two together. So it makes for a nice little controllable process. Now one of the things you might be noticing is that if I go around and select the different trackers, the matching pair, the matching tracker in that pair is an orange color in the other eye. So right now I've got the tracker selected in the left eye. The corresponding right hand tracker is in this orange color. So I can go and select a couple of them and uh, you'll see the other ones light up in the other eye. So that gives you a way of seeing exactly how things are matched up between the two eyes. And you can also go now and if I go and select on this one of them, you'll see that it basically is copying over the selected trackers from the one to the other. So if you've got a whole bunch of trackers selected, you can just click on one of them in the other view and that way you're, you won't have to go around and reselect things at all. So that's kind of handy. Now, we've got all these trackers set up. What about doing some actual tracking to them? So if I just started stepping through this, you know, you'll see things will go off in all kinds of different directions. It's hard to tell exactly what's happening necessarily if you've got a whole lot of trackers involved and you want to know if, if they're exactly staying on track or not. So what you can do is switch to a different view. This is a stereo simultrack view. And the simultrack view shows all of the keys basically of selected trackers simultaneously. And it has a bunch of different modes depending on how many trackers you have selected. Here I've got four different trackers selected. So there's basically one tile for each of those trackers. So you can go and, and run through and see what's happening. I'm also now just going to sh turn on something you can't see. It's off the bottom of the capture window. It's uh, force row mode in the simultrack window. And that just forces this row by row uh, layout in the simultrack window. So here you know, this is the key at frame 0. This is the key at frame 14. This is the, well, this is actually at the current time. This is the key at frame 15. This is the key at, at uh, frame 30. So this gives you, you know, some nice ways to look at exactly what's happening and see that your keys are staying on path and are nice and stable and so on. So that's a kind of handy way to be able to monitor all these different views simultaneously. So that gives you some idea of, the, of how you can do tracking in stereo. I just want to point out that uh, a, a little behind the scenes of how you can go and set up your own little viewport configurations. And if we look at the menu here for what different viewports are available, you'll notice that a bunch of these appear multiple times. There's you know, a left camera, a right camera, and a left simultrack, and a right simultrack, as well as the basic camera and simultrack. So you know, this is a left camera view and a right camera view. And you can use those particular viewport configurations to get the kind of placement that you want. So you, you know, normally you would use the viewport manager to go and set up a particular configuration. So you, know, you can go and select different uh, 
configurations, go and uh, you know take one of the views and duplicate it, and then uh, go and start uh, modifying it to do uh, what what you want, and you can use all of these different types of views to to get what you want to have in mind. So that's how you make sure that you you get a particular viewport that's always showing the left camera, a particular one that's showing the right camera, um, and doing the right simul track or the left simul track or so. So hopefully that gives you an idea of uh, how you can get some of your own particular viewport uh, configurations and with this kind of uh, facility with with stereo you know certainly you can set up some fairly interesting views so enjoy and thanks for listening